So I'm assuming you've been aware of the news and the recent massacre in the Baptist Church in Texas where a young, very deranged atheist uh, basically got um, an AR-15 rifle and put on Kevlar and SWAT helmets and simply butchered 27 uh, churchgoers on that Sunday, including uh, a baby, if I remember, and a couple of kids. And I was listening to an interview with the guy that could very well arguably be, arguably be said to be responsible for stopping him. Uh, it's, he's a, a father who woke up to the noise of the gunshots and literally ran barefoot with his own AR-15. And due to his military background and NRA training, was able to, and he says, by the way, God helped him as well. He was able to identify that the Kevlar, the bulletproof, bulletproof vest that the killer was wearing, had a certain uh, part of it that was exposed on the side and with a clean shot managed to shoot him. And that's when he, the killer escaped with a car and they chased him, him and another guy, and pretty much it ended there. Now, he found the killer right outside of the church, so it was too late, everybody were dead. But he managed to stop him and the killer had a whole arsenal and tons of ammunition in his truck, so he was clearly intending to do more. You know, if not killing more uh, people, and especially given the fact that there's a church, another church right nearby, because this was a religious terrorism crime. If not that, then the very least he would try to kill as many cops as he could. And I saw an interview with him that was like a, a 40 minute interview on Steven Crowder's YouTube channel. And I will link to it below. And uh, towards the end, the guy said that he had kind of conflicting opinions on, you know, what he did. Like, he, he obviously, he was sure that was the right thing. And he said he would do it all over again if he had to, you know, pl proudly. But in terms of the knowing that you how much good you did you know not just that you did good but how much good he did not know and i think that's that when i heard that like the fact that because the killer was already outside the church you know you don't know if he was intending to kill more people or how many more would have been dead if he wouldn't have stopped him that ambivalence that not being able to to count how many people you potentially saved it made me realize that is exactly the problem with good versus evil or success versus failure. And that problem is it's easy to destroy. And the reason it's easy to destroy is because it's tangible. Like go, go out there and try to build an iPhone or any other electronic device. Just try to build it. You know, it's, it's virtually impossible for a regular person to build it on their own. But all you need in order to destroy a phone is a couple of seconds and some really bad intent. Just a show of force, you know, grab it, throw it as hard as you want, as high as you can, hit it with something, it's going to break. And the damage is, is clear. The damage is something that's completely tangible. The killer 
had a very easy way of keeping score of what he did. So it was a lot easier for the killer to measure his success than for the hero because the hero, his job was prevention. The killer's job was destruction. So the killer knew that the more deaths, the better. And if he was deranged enough, and it appears that he was, perhaps the younger, the better. So what a baby would count as like 10 points, an adult five, and an old person three. That's just the way to, you can count it. If your intent is to take life, especially on the basis of hating religious people who happen to be statistically less violent and donate more money, significantly more money than any other type of population. I'm specific, specifically referring to Christians. So this goes back to, again, good and bad, success and failure. Let's say that you want to, uh, you know, lose weight and, you know, look better, be, you know, be healthier. When you look at it, when you think about it, it's very easy to measure destruction. You know, you just look at really, really bad actions that you can take, like eating that nasty thing that you know will not good, do good to your body. But, you know, you still do it anyway because you really want to. And, again, the benefits are clear. But if you choose to delay it or to, to, to not eat it at all, now the benefits are not so clear. Obviously, the more you articulate your goal, the more you break it down step by step, the clearer it becomes. But... Destruction is always self-evident, but, but creating is not. So that's the fundamental, fundamental challenge, is that you need to really clarify and articulate when you're striving for success and for goodness. Because being moral, being good, being ethical, taking proper action towards success, these are all intangible things until you make them tangible again it's always easy to to destroy there's only one way to destroy <laughs> just like smash you know but to build there's you now you're into going to infinity so think how how easy it is to to take a life, you know, just bam, pull the trigger, shoot, and he's dead. But to to create an amazing life, whether it means, you know, birth or whether it means raising a person, that's a real challenge because there's an infinite amount of ways to do it and you don't know you don't you can know which one is the proper one. You all you can do is keep trying and trying to find out the best information and get the best advice on how to do it. So fundamentally, yeah, when you're in the realm of the good, you're in the realm of the inarticulate. You're in the realm of the things that have not yet happened that you need to assemble from the chaos. When you're in the failure or the destruction side, you're in the realm of breaking order into chaos, back into the, the cesspool of ineffective just blunder of reality. So think about it deeply, about the things that you want to achieve, things you want to accomplish, the different moral decisions that you're currently facing or might face in the future. Think how much would you need to articulate them 
and measure them in order to get them to the level where they are just as articulated, if not more, than the evil things. So that when evil comes or when failure attracts you and tries to give you, give you reasons, again, very clear reasons because failure is clear. That's why almost 100% of the people are failures. That's why almost 100% of the people have moral problems. It's because it's easier to justify failure. It's easier to justify evil because it's always simple. It's always the most immediate explanation possible. But go ahead and explain to someone why he should make the right choice with someone else, the ethical choice, why he should refrain from being angry at somebody because you need to take responsibility for yourself. Go ahead and explain that to someone when you can just tell them, yeah, that guy's a dick, you know, fuck him. Go take whatever you want from him. So you need to have a lot of articulation to do. You seriously need to sit down and, and figure out your whys, figure out your values. Why are those your values? Why are those your whys? Why do you take these actions? Where is it leading? What, what is the bigger plan? What's the biggest plan you can think of? The biggest vision? Break it down. What does this lead to? What does this lead to? Just like I talked about in the previous video, like do I know what I'm doing? Have I articulated what I'm doing? Have I learned about what I'm doing? Do I know if this action is correct or not? You need to articulate these things or else evil and failure will keep attracting its way back to you. Again, being unfocused, unclear, not knowing. That is what brings failure. That's what brings evil. You know, just, just imagine what went on in the mind of this poor but, but deranged and, you know, horrible person. I'm not saying he's horrible because he was born horrible. He became horrible. Like, how much time do you think it takes for a person to descend into this sort of behavior? You know, what kind of a simplistic worldview? How much anger? This is a person that I bet if you talk to him, he doesn't know anything. Like, he, he doesn't know facts. He just knows identities and he knows dogma you know he he was against religious people but but he was more religious than anyone else to be able to justify killing a mother protecting her kids and, and try to and kill one of her kids on the way like how religious do you have to be in your thinking to think every all religious people are evil all christians are evil you know while you see in front of yourself a mother that is covering her children to, you know, hopefully save their lives somehow, which she did, you know, but not all of them, just three out of four, which is better than zero. And this is you. I'm not saying you're, that's who you are, that's your, you're, that, you're that bad, but that's who you and me are. Like, that's, that's how far, how deep people like you and me can go if we don't articulate ourselves properly towards good and justice and, and truth and success. You know, I'm not just saying these words to virtue signal words, you know, like, oh, success, love, you know, no. I'm, I'm, every single one of these words matters. You know, when I say truth, that's what I mean is speaking the truth. You know, when you say all Christians are bad, that's not the truth. That is the antithesis of the truth. That is an ideology. You know, when I say ethics, that's what it means. Like, would I like to be treated like that? Would I want somebody to, to, to massacre me and my family? No. Okay, and success, like, the more you grow and, and achieve things, the less you'll be inclined to, to, to do these kinds of things. Just, I'm not saying that uh, criminality, by the way, is 
necessarily correlated with poverty because you know people tend to spread that misinformation about black people yeah that's why they you know they on average um i think 50 percent of the murder is caused by uh black people which is about like five percent of the population or ten percent of the population and people say oh it's because they're poor no it's because there's it's a bad community the community needs to be fixed not the money thing and how do we know that well there's other poor communities in the united states and none of them have a higher criminal uh, statistics than regular communities. So it's not necessarily poverty, but, but, but success in itself. And I, I don't mean success on its own. I mean success, you know, because you, you saw Harvey Weinstein and people like that who raped people and abused their power. I mean success when it's tied to, to giving and to truth and ethics. Then it, it's amplified and you do so much good you don't see a reason to do bad. Okay, so that was my rant, and hope you take a lot from this. Um, it's been a pretty profound day for me, uh, just sitting and listening to uh, this hero talk for 40 minutes, and really putting myself in his shoes. And you know, would I do it? Would I actually get up and just grab the gun and? run out there to fight him uh, i don't know i don't know i i really don't know but i really hope i would because that that would be something that i would like to remember myself for in case i died so thanks for watching um on this uh <laughs> kind of heavy um video but you know it it has its purpose so you know Keep fighting the good fight, and I'll talk to you soon.